Bayer's infamous connection to IG Farben and the Nazi Rockefeller biomedical biowarfare cartel concerned me, so I contacted the FBI. Hello? Consistent with the nefarious connections between government investigators and drug industrialists, the FBI refused to respond to my urgent warnings and later pleas. The anthrax mailing operation, including the media's coverage of the mailings, sent bear stock soaring and approximately 30,000 people in the nation's capital alone to their local drugstores for this potion. Within six months, nearly 90% of those frightened people suffered brain damage, in many cases irreversible. This was reported in the Washington Times. The story by investigative journalist Kelly O'Meara was published in the paper's Insight magazine. By October 12, 2001, the FBI had posted a million dollar reward for valuable clues in the anthrax mailings mystery. It took the FBI six months to respond to my relentless communications. Then, rather than awarding me anything, even a simple thank you, FBI agents were dispatched to interrogate me as a suspect. See this crap? Somebody knows I'm talking to you. Not according to the men in blue. Oh, what is it this time? Kitty porn again? Sexual battery of a patient? They want to discredit you for what? Because I'm a dangerous man, because I know too much about the truth. Now that uh, end of the world apocalyptic garbage, you right? You know my work? I was right about Dallas, wasn't Ouch. I? Ouch, how are you right? Are you familiar with the antivirus at your mother? Yeah, it was a deadly virus spread by field mice in the southwestern United States several years ago. According to the newspaper, FEMA was called out to manage an outbreak of the antivirus. Are you familiar with what the Federal Emergency Management Agency's real power is? FEMA allows the White House to suspend constitutional government upon declaration of a national emergency. Think about that. What is an agency with such broad sweeping power doing managing a small viral outbreak in suburban Texas? You're saying it wasn't such a small outbreak? No. I'm saying it wasn't the hand of virus. Well, what was it? What was it? When we were young men in the military, your father and I were recruited for a project. They told us it was biological warfare or a virus. What killed those men? What killed them, I won't even write about. We have no context for what killed those men, or any appreciation of the scale at which it'll be unleashed in the future. A plague? A plague to end all plagues, Agent Mulder. A silent weapon for a quiet war. The systematic release of an indiscriminate organism for which the men who will bring it on still have no cure. They've been working on this for 50 years. While the rest of the world have been fighting cooks and commies, these men have been secretly negotiating a planned Armageddon. Negotiating with whom? I think you know. The timetable has been set. It'll happen on a holiday when people are away from their homes. The president will declare a state of emergency at which time all government, all federal agencies will come under the power of the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, the secret government. They call me paranoid. Go back to Dallas, Agent Mulder, and dig. Or we're gonna find out along with the rest of the country. When it's too late. Two months after I urged the FBI to investigate Bayer and the sole anthrax vaccine maker, Bioport LLC, the Washington Post reported that the Bureau was pursuing the possibility that financial gain was the primary motive behind the mailings. Washington Post writers Susan Schmidt and Joby Warwick reported on December 21st that the FBI was probing at least two military industrial contractors that shipped the specified mailed anthrax powder. The first was the Army's Dugway Proving Grounds, and the second was the Battelle Memorial Institute, BMI, a sort of one-stop shopping mall for everything military. BMI is allegedly a non-profit CIA and military contractor involved in vaccine acquisitions and development. It also administers and supplies bioweapons facilities at Dugway Proving Grounds, including their main aerosol germ testing structure they euphemistically call the Life Sciences Building. 
Based on extensive evidence, BMI appeared to be the only anthrax supplier staffed with the resources, human and otherwise, capable of producing the hyper-weaponized anthrax that was mailed. BMI developed a specific AIM strain of powdered anthrax that was twice as concentrated as anything the Soviets had ever produced. Plus, it was electromagnetized to spread easily and rapidly. This work was done under a top secret CIA bioweapons program, an anonymous Pentagon official called Project Jefferson. William Broad of the New York Times twice reported this project was named Clear Vision. I telephoned William Broad after emailing him for months. We spoke of Battelle's labs in West Jefferson, Ohio, as a leading institutional suspect with ties to the drug cartel and the anthrax vaccine maker, Bioport. BMI also administered the U.S. military's Joint Vaccine Acquisitions Program, a multi-billion dollar enterprise. Extensive efforts were being made before and after the mailings to get governing officials to approve of a quarter of a billion dollar anthrax vaccine purchase from Bioport. Meanwhile, congressional investigations had proven Bioport grossly negligent in vaccine quality control. The sole supplier of anthrax vaccine was completely untrustworthy according to congressional records. The private Bioport company was directed by a wealthy Saudi with banking and suspected terrorist ties, as well as military and presidential ties through U.S. Ambassador to England, William Crow, a retired Navy Admiral. Crow and friends evolved the company in association with Britain's primary biological weapons testing organization at Port and Down. In other words, Bioport was an American profit-making venture spun from a British government-directed war supplier. The Washington Post reported that the FBI learned about, but evaded, the BMI-CIA defensive project. This, despite the fact their bio-warfare contract involved a precise strain of anthrax that was mailed. So what's really going on here? The press and the FBI were aware that Battelle had contracted with the CIA operative and anthrax expert, our good old Grand Dr. William Patrick III, to prepare a report approximately two years prior to the anthrax mailings on what this precise germ's capability and lethality would be if mailed. This would not have been done unless someone in that organization had not foreseen its use in the very way it was used, for bioterrorism, to generate fear and financial rewards. Freedom and fear are at war. The advance of human freedom, the great achievement of our time and the great hope of every time, now depends on us. Our nation, this generation, will lift a dark thread of violence from our people and our future.